This video is on the objective use double angle formulas to find values of trigonometric functions. All right, and this is number one, so the first video on a question in your homework related to this objective. And let's take a look. So if you're unfamiliar with the topic or the objective and you'd like to see some more stuff on it, uh, please click on more instruction Look at their videos, their notes, their examples for you, and hopefully those help. Alright, so what you're going to notice is that the double angle formulas, right, before we get into this actual question here, I'm going to go over what the double angle formulas are for um, sine, cosine, and tangent. And if you remember what the sum and difference formulas were, well, at least just the sum formulas, uh, then you could pretty easily derive the double angle formulas. Let me show you. Let me get rid of the calculator here. No need for that. All right. So we're doing the double angle formulas. Like I said, if you remember the sum formulas, you'll have no problem stating the double angle formulas. So hopefully you recall the sum formulas for sine, cosine, and tangent, which were the following. All right, remember the sine of, say, you know, alpha plus beta was equal to the sine of alpha multiplied by the cosine of beta plus the sine of beta times the cosine of alpha. All right. But then what if uh, what if alpha and beta were the same angle? Then you'd have a double angle formula. So what if alpha and beta we're both the same angle, say, called theta. All right. So if alpha and beta are the same angle, then what you have is the sine of theta plus theta. Theta plus theta, which would be 2 times theta, or double theta. And then all of these, you'd have sine theta, cosine theta, plus sine theta cosine theta again. I'm just replacing all the alphas and betas with some angle theta. So you get the same thing twice. So you have 2 times sine theta cosine theta. And this is your double angle formula for sine. And I'll do the same thing for uh, for cosine. All right, now cosine's a little more because there's actually multiple versions of it. But all right, so let's start with this. The sine of two, twice an angle, theta, is two times the sine of that angle theta times the cosine of that angle theta. All right. Okay. Now for your cosine formulas. So again, remember the cosine of say alpha plus beta, right, remember the sum formula. This was the cosine of alpha times the cosine of beta minus, right, remember the cosine of a sum was a difference, and then the product of the sines of those angles, the sine of alpha times the sine of beta. Right, and then again, to get your double angle formula, just have alpha and beta be the same angle. All right, so what if alpha and beta were equal? And say they were equal to this angle theta. So I'm just going to go through here, replace all the alphas and betas with theta. And then we'd get the following. The cosine of theta plus theta, or 2 theta, right? your double angle, double theta, would be equal to cosine theta times cosine theta again. So that would be the cosine of theta 
squared right, minus and then the sine of theta times the sine of theta. So the sine of theta squared. So this is this is one version. But off to the side here. Remember anytime you see a trig function squared, you could probably replace it using one of the Pythagorean identities. So hopefully you recall the Pythagorean identity. Remember that the, the cosine of an angle squared is the same as one minus the sine of that same angle squared. Remember, because cosine squared plus sine squared was always equal to one. So if I make that replacement, we also get this for the cosine of a double angle formula. So you could say the cosine of two theta is the cosine of theta squared minus the sine of theta squared and replacing cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared, you'd have 1 minus sine squared minus sine squared again. So you have 1 minus 2 sine squareds. So 1 minus 2 times the sine of theta then squared. Right? But you could also, you know, just kind of manipulating this a bit, instead of, instead of replacing cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared, you know, you could replace sine squared with 1 minus cosine squared. Right, the sine squared would be 1 minus cosine squared. Now if I do that, you'd have to distribute this negative, right? Sine squared is the quantity 1 minus cosine squared. Then distributing the negative, I'd have cosine squared minus 1 plus cosine squared. So one more version of this cosine of a double angle formula is this. I'd have again cosine squared minus 1 plus cosine squared again. So you have two cosine squareds and then the minus 1. All, right. all three of these, okay, all three of these are valid double angle formulas uh, for the cosine of a double angle, the cosine of twice theta. All right. It's cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta, or 1 minus 2 sine squared theta, or 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. And it's really up to you which one you choose. All three of them are going to give you give you the same value. All right, so that one's a little trickier maybe to remember, but again, it all comes from the sum formula. If you remember the sum formula and just have those two angles in the sum formula be the same, you're getting your double angle formulas. All right, and finally, for the tangent. All right, let's look at the sum formula for tangent and just have those angles be the same angle. So finally, remember the tangent of, say, alpha plus beta was the tangent of alpha plus the tangent of beta, all of that divided by 1 minus the product of the tangent of alpha and the tangent of beta, right? So the tangent of alpha times the tangent of beta there. And then again, for your double angle formula, right, what's the tangent of twice theta or two out two theta? Just have these angles be the same, right? What if, what if alpha was equal to beta? You know, and again, if they're equal, let's call them theta or whatever, what if, something else, whatever you want, right, just some other symbol. If that's the case, then you get the tangent of twice theta, right? Theta plus theta, that's your double angle, twice an angle, two theta. And then you'd have in the numerator, tangent theta plus tangent theta. So that's two times the tangent of theta. And then in your denominator, you have one minus, and then the tangent of theta times the tangent of theta. So the tangent of theta squared, right? One minus tangent squared theta. Right, and here is your tangent of a double angle formula. 
Right. Again, all these come from the sum formulas and just having those angles in the sum formulas be the same all right, to get your double angle. All right. So now that we've got the formulas written out, all right, your sine, cosine, and tangent of a double angle, let's take a look back at the question again. So here, we're given that the sine of just theta is you know, 3 times the square root of 10 divided by 10. And this angle theta is an angle that, you know, if you were to draw it in standard position, would end in quadrant 2. Knowing this about theta, they're asking what would be the sine of double theta, right? If I were to double this angle, what would be the sine of that new angle? All right, so just like I did back in the section on, on sum and difference formulas, you know, we're given the information about this angle theta. I'm going to draw that angle. All right, we're going to draw this angle. So here, we're given this information about an angle called, you know, theta. We're given the fact that the sine of theta is 3 times the square root of 10 you know, divided by 10. And we're also given the fact that theta is ending in quadrant 2. So let me draw a picture of this angle, theta. All right. Now remember, pictures of angles in standard position always have an initial side of the positive x-axis on the coordinate plane. And then quadrant 2 is over here, right, upper left quadrant. So I can go, I can go you know, make a negative angle, make a positive angle, it doesn't matter as long as it ends in quadrant 2. So here, here's, here's, here's an angle, theta, that ends in quadrant 2. Right, has a terminal side in quadrant 2. And remember what I'm doing with all these. I take a point on the terminal side, right, say this point there. I draw a perpendicular segment to the x-axis, the horizontal axis, and that creates this right triangle that corresponds to angle theta. Now the right triangle here has, you know, the reference angle for theta, right? This angle formed by the terminal side and the x-axis here. I'll call it R for reference angle. And, you know, if you're setting up this right triangle, I want it so that the sine of this reference angle, the sine of R, is, you know, the same as the sine of theta, but, but you know, since the reference angle is acute, it's going to be positive. Well, this is also positive, so 3 root 10 over 10. Now remember, I'll, I'll make this the opposite and this the hypotenuse. Right? Remember, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So in my picture, the side opposite the reference angle, I'll say has a length of you know 3 times the square root of 10 units. And this is going to be the y coordinate of this point up here. Right, 3 times the square root of 10 is the y coordinate of that point. And then the hypotenuse is 10, right? So the length, the distance to the origin is 10. Remember that was called r, and that was always positive. And this is also a positive here because it's up. The only one I'm going to call a negative is this side down here because it's left of center. And that's what I need to find, right? That, and I'll call that x. And in order to find this, I need to use you know, the Pythagorean theorem. Right? I have two sides of a right triangle. I'm trying to find the third one. So by the Pythagorean theorem, right, x squared plus, and then this other leg, 3 times the square root of 10 squared should be equal to the hypotenuse squared. So we have x squared plus, now remember, this is 3 times the square root of 10 times 3 times the square root of 10. This would be 90. All right, you'd have nine, 3 squared is 9. And then square root of 10 squared is 10. 9 times 10 is is 90. Okay? And then over here is 100. And then I subtract 90. We have x squared equals, you know, 10. And then x could be plus or minus square root of 10. Now, again, I'm going to call it the negative. I'm going to call, I'm going to use the negative one because we are left of center. Right, so this x-coordinate, right, the x-coordinate of my point here in, in quadrant 2 is negative square root of 10. All right. uh, okay, so now I, have the, now I have all the information I need for angle theta. Right. 
But now, right? Now we're not talking. Now we're not. You know, we're not talking about angle theta all the time. Now we're doubling that, right? What about what about the angle two theta? Right? What if what if I took this angle I drew here and doubled it? What would be the sign of this new angle? Right? And that's where the formula is going to come in, right? The sign of this new angle which we're asked to find. Remember the formula for this, the sine of 2 theta is 2 times the sine of, you know, just plain old theta times the cosine of theta as well. Right? You saw how I got that earlier with the sum formula. And these two values, the sine of theta and the cosine of theta, I know how to find from my picture. So this is 2 times, now the sine of theta was given to me. Right? The sine of theta was given as 3 times the square root of 10 over 10. It's the cosine of theta that I don't know immediately, but I can very easily find it now that I have this drawing. Remember the cosine of an angle when I draw it in standard position is you know that that x coordinate of the point on the terminal side divided by r the distance to the origin. So negative square root of 10 divided by 10. That would be the cosine of this angle and it should be negative. Remember it's in quadrant 2. Angles in quadrant 2 have a negative cosine. And that's what I'm putting in here uh, in the use of the formula. So 2 times the sine times you know the cosine of theta we see in my picture is negative square root of 10 divided by 10. All right, and then we'll multiply and simplify. All right, so the numerator, I've got 6 times 10, but negative, right? So negative 60. Uh, the denominator is 10 times 10 is 100. And this reduces to negative 3 fifths. All right, 20 goes into 63 times and 10, 105 times. So I don't know what the measure of 2 theta is. But I can tell you, based on the information they gave me about theta, I can tell you that the sine of 2 theta would be negative 3 fifths. And that's all they're asking us for. So back on the website, provide your answer below, negative 3 fifths. Wonderful. And again, please read through your answer explanations and uh, you know whether you're right or wrong, right? When you're correct, read through and make sure that your reasoning was right. You know, and if you're incorrect, especially, read through them and see if you can figure out what happened, where you went wrong. So that way, if you see a problem like that again, you, you'll, you'll hopefully do better. Right, and hopefully, watching me go through this now again, this one's a longer one because I actually went through and developed all the double angle formulas. I'm not going to do that in every video. Um, but hopefully watching me do the problem too, you know, and looking at more instruction, well, all that stuff will help you when you work on this kind of a problem on your own. And thank you very much for watching.